Welcome back to Biz15, the Yorkshire Business Podcast. I've got the pleasure of being joined by Liam and Mark from the Sheffield Eagles, who are two of the senior leadership team and a driving force behind uh, behind the, both the squad and the business. Um, Liam is the general manager. I'll introduce Liam. Uh, and Mark is the commercial manager. Liam, do you just want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Liam. I'm the general manager at the club. I've been in post for six years now. Uh, I came to Sheffield, oh God, 12 years ago for university and then basically stopped ever since really and stayed in South Yorkshire. So no, it's a busy time for us at the minute uh, leading up to the season, but yeah, it's a, it's a good time as well. Perfect. And Mark? Yeah, Mark Hannigan. I'm the commercial manager here at the Eagles and I do all the sponsorship and run the, sort of the business, the, the bookkeeping side of the club as well. I've uh, been here since 2017, I think, when I just came in as a volunteer to run the corporate lounge yeah, on match days yeah, yeah, and, and still better. here. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us. It's um, you, you guys are actually our first external guest to the show. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us. How's the how's the last eighteen months been in the Spartan world, Liam? I'll, I'll hand over to you. Crazy. Uh, Covid just sort of hit everyone uh, for six. Really, it was tough, uh, especially for me. Sort of play welfare point of view and mental health side and things like that that we didn't know from week to week what was going to happen so we sort of this the squad went off they went on furlough and they took that really well very mm. quickly uh, but from week to week we didn't know what was going on so we, they kept in physical physical shape at home but from week to week they didn't know if we was going to restart the season when the new season was going to start when we was coming back how would that would look so yeah that was that was very tough to sort of keep keep morale up uh, and then from the business side as well, it was it was very tough with speaking with sponsors, speaking with season ticket holders, uh, and all that side of things. So yeah, it was tough. We're coming out the other side of it now. Fingers crossed. We've still got to the do the testing uh, and everything like that with the COVID testing and put all the right things in place. But yeah, fingers crossed that we're coming out the other side of it. How was it for you, Mark? Yeah, it was difficult. I think it was the speed at which it hit as well. We mm. I think we played the day before or two days before they announced the first national lockdown. And it was touch and go up until the day before. We, we had rumours that the lockdown was going to come. Would we play? Wouldn't we play? So it was difficult from that point of view. And as Liam touched on, we had only played, what, five games, I think, something like that. We had sponsorship contracts in place. Mm. People had paid their sponsorships. Um, but fortunately, everyone was really good with us and, and understood the, the huge impact that this uh, pandemic would have on, on sport as a whole and particularly ourselves. I think the, the thing is that, people didn't know what was going to happen and that's the thing we, you know we as a business broke we're sponsors to the eagles and i think we came to the breakfast event and then everything got got shut down and there was nothing we could do about it um and it didn't it didn't matter because it was a you know it's a contribution to the club um and no one can prepare for it i think honestly if, if we're being honest i think when we shut down in in march whenever it was i think we expect to be back playing by Mid June, first yeah, of July, yeah, when yeah. it first happened, and then obviously it just went on and on and on. I think it was maybe August before we found out that the season wouldn't. It was end of July, yes. There was yeah. we, there was looking at at one stage but having a condensed season. Then there was looking at potentially a, win, a short winter competition, and then so we just didn't know where we was at. And then again, it was a difficulty as well because we haven't got our own facilities at the moment. It is trying to book a gym, for example, and like everywhere was shut down, and then the cleaning side of it and things like that, we couldn't get in anywhere. The testing, where we could bring the lads back in, and we've, our, our playing squad is quite uh, quite spread out as well. We've got a lot of players in Hull, a lot of players in West Yorkshire, some local to South Yorkshire, some over the other side of the Pennine, so it was very tough to sort of manage that side as well. But I've got to say to them, to their credit, they sort of they sort of took everything on the chin and just every we had a sort of Zoom meeting every Monday night and said, look, this is what's going on, this is what we're doing, and and it's pretty fine with it. To be fair, they just sort of they got on with it, which yeah, credit to them. You mentioned morale and keeping it going. What what did you do as a, not just in your role as a GM or your role? How did the club keep it going? So so one side, like Matt said, seeing ticket holders, it was tough for them. So we we sort of we looked at what other clubs were doing, we looked at uh, what other sports teams were doing, and then. We, uh, we launched with Facebook Live videos, so every week we sort of simulated a game. So we did like the match day graphics of the squad, the half-time score, the full-time score. And then we did a Facebook Live of a, of a past game. So the first game in Super League against Paris when we won finals, we did all these and allowed fans to engage with each other on the Facebook. And then it was nice that ex-players from them games as well were engaging with the fans on, on Facebook. So we got a lot of engagement through social media with the, with the, uh, with the supporters that way. And then the squad just sort of kept together as well. And we did the Zooms, we did updates. Uh, Mark, our coach, wanted a, a joke from each player. So every day a player had to put a joke in the group. And just, just little things just to keep keep each other going, really. Uh, 
throughout it. But yeah, we've again, hopefully, like I said, we've come out the other side of it. No, it's, it's really interesting you say that because on, on previous episodes um, that, that we've run, the last two have been based around well-being of yeah. staff. Um, and I think sometimes from an external person looking in, um, a player is a player, but they're not, they're staff. They're, yeah. they're staff to the club. So they're just as important to keep everything going like a business would do um, or, or a, uh, how you would envisage your business. But at the end of the day, the club still have staff it still is a business to to be run and there's got to be some form of infrastructure put in place for someone um who is potentially isolated their life would be gym and training they've taken that potentially away from them um and it could have gone one of two ways yeah and like i say you you sort the again they are staff but they they come together three nights a week for training with their mates essentially their group of 25 mates and then to take that away from them and they're either living at home on their own or a family or the parents whatever it is it's, it's tough for him so yeah we're, we're looking at the fact that our assistant coach Keith Senior works for Rugby League Curves which is a registered charity of Rugby Football League and he's he's a transition manager there so he helps players transition from playing into jobs after Rugby League but again he was very good to lean on as advice and things like that and help implement a few things during the lockdown to make sure that uh, we kept morale up and we kept the, the staff motivated. And from the commercial side of things Mark that, that probably adds um a similar impact potentially during COVID where, um, yes, you had the players and, and the things on the pitch were, um, or on and off the pitch weren't great, but also there was a business element to that as well. Yes, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of our major sponsors were really good with us, really positive, and we worked with them through the lockdown period. But the thing with COVID for me was the hardest thing I found was probably last season where we were playing behind closed doors because we're giving sponsors X, Y, and Z, but we can't actually give them anything because they're not allowed to attend games. It's the regulations are in place, but we're still playing and the fans can't be there. And that, that was quite difficult to manage. But again, through the support of the sponsors, as soon as we could get them back in, we opened up as much as we could in a short space of time as possible to, to try and give them that match day experience. Well, I have to say, I mentioned earlier, we were your sponsors um, and we continue to be sponsors. Um, but the actual... Uh, live streaming of the games was great, um, especially since a lot of games were, were on Sunday as well. Yeah. So it was more of a case of um, we, we had the time to be able to watch them. We managed to get our sponsor, um, as in the Brook sponsorship, as, as a feature. And they actually had people text us afterwards saying, I didn't realise you were sponsor. So actually, you might think that you, might, you didn't have too much to, to give back. We got a fair bit from it, not in terms of tangible someone ringing us up say I've seen you on the Sheffield Eagles stream how about that 10 day lean job it isn't obviously that's never going to happen but from a brand awareness point of view people recognised us and people saw the logo flash up it was great so from our point of view as well which is brilliant it's been able to give back you look at the business thing of that that, that was a cost to the club there was a cost to, to do the live stream which it was never in debate we had to do it because we had to be able to put <sighs> What we do as a business is our product is what happens on that pitch for 80 minutes. We don't make baked beans or tomato sauce. We don't sell anything like that. It's rugby. So that's our product that we put out there. And we had to be able to put it out there. And the live stream enabled us to do that during the year. Yeah, I've got, I've got to say the benefit of the live stream as well is that uh, the Rugby Football League I've led on that through the Our League app. And the numbers have now shot up to 200,000 downloads of this app. And they've been able to build up a a decent amount of data to work out the dwell times, how many people watch certain games, this, that and the other. And then from that, they've built that data and then they've gone out and we've got a now a two-year deal with Premier Sports to broadcast games on Monday night. So from get, building that data up over, over the sort of the lockdown, then they've been able to go out and get a broadcast deal for the Championship, which is great. And let's um, fast forward now 18 months from, from when um, COVID first came around. Are you still, I guess it's hard to suggest anything from the next season or what's going to happen because it's all a forecast, but has anything from the last 18 months impacted the way that you're planning for the next season? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so we, we were very fortunate last year in that um, we knew we were going to be playing at the Keepmo Stadium because the build was happening down at Olympic Legacy Park in Sheffield, so we was able to be outside the city. But uh, Doncaster and the Rovers uh, the, uh, had everything in place with COVID. So we've learnt a lot from uh, Club Doncaster in, in, in that sense. And then a lot, a lot of the COVID restrictions were eased. But again, we've had to go to that top level and learn everything. So then when it does hopefully come down to a less restricted level, we can implement it quite quickly and quite easily at a new venue as well. So no, uh, we're fairly confident that we're, we can hit all the right targets in terms of what we need to deliver in terms of make sure we're safe and make sure everyone's 
everyone's well-being is correct for match days. Is there any, um, do you think there's been any kind of impact on potential uh, fans turning up? Yeah. Or do they think that they're a bit nervous about, um, oh, well, I'm still going to be in a stadium full of loads? Full of Definitely, loads. like Matt, Matt touched on, we played five games last year. Our last game was Workington in the Challenge Cup. And we had, I think we only had sort of 330, 340 at that game. Mm. And we, you look at the sales of that game, majority of our fan base is getting older and we need to we need to action that and challenge that and get a younger fan base in but a lot of our fan base didn't become because he's in that older older bracket and they're quite fearful and again when we returned uh, against Feverston in, in the May of the following year that yeah a lot of our older fans stayed away for some time as well and we, we was coming back to a 15,000 seat stadium and anyone could sit anywhere and with social distance there was still that like, worrying people and hopefully that will go again we've got the uh, the booster jabs and things coming in now and we're still testing the players once a week and things like that so hopefully it will ease but Again, there will be some restrictions as we kick off the season next year. And has there been any impact um, actually from the players? Are the players just like, we're raring to go? We want to put potentially all the last 18 months nightmare behind us around social bubbles and all that stuff that comes with yeah, um, so the it, training? It, it, come, it, it sort of it hit us uh, the back end of July. We, I had it, uh, majority of the players had it. We had to call off two games, one again. One at home against York, which we were really disappointed about. They was going to bring a large fan base with them. That was really tough for us. And then Bradford away as well, which uh, we thought could have been a winnable fixture. We were just getting back into the form. Uh, we just lost closely against Halifax. We thought we could get back in. So that, that hit us a little bit. But again, hopefully we come out the other side of it now. And the players have just come back into training last week, uh, ready for the season start at the end of January next year. That Yeah, they're all raring to go. There's a positive, positive mood in the camp. Bro, um, over to you, Mark. What's the... Um, biggest challenge potentially that, that you're facing in in your role not necessarily from a um a covid impact but just in a, a general commercial management role there's still a number of businesses who are going through what they're having to go through post furlough restructuring uh, bits and bobs like that and they're being seen to put money into sport and sponsorship and, and marketing in general is difficult for them to um what's the word before justified given that might have to make redundancies etc and things like that and I, I don't think we've seen the worst of the effects of of what's happened mm. um, that's still to come having said that we are in a fortunate position again we've got the new stadium coming online which is really positive for us the club's coming back into Sheffield permanently after go on, eight. eight years yeah. out in a, in a nomadic existence in various places from Doncaster Wakefield um, I think we counted it the day. Liam has managed games in 11 different stadiums, yeah, I think it was. Um, so there's so much positivity happening around the club, and that, again, is breeding interest and for people getting involved. And without wishing to do a disservice to our friends with the round ball, to financially get involved in, in rugby league is a different league to, to, to football, both yeah, Premier absolutely. League and Championship. So. Yeah, and you know the people um, potentially get involved with football... Um, because of the potential advantages that a large crowd brings and TV rights. People that are involved in rugby league tend to have a passion for the sport. Yeah, Hence, the, you know, yeah. And also, if you look at football now, a lot of them, I uh, you can't read the, 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 on the shirts, it's Chinese writing on the boards, but that's where the money is. It's a global audience mm. now. So what we've really tried to do is steer away from that side of things and work with local businesses. And if you look at our kits, they're all local businesses, people from South Yorkshire that want to work within South Yorkshire. And a big ethos of what we're doing going forward, now the stadium is coming online, is not only about branding through rugby league on the pitch, doing it off the pitch as well. So it's non-stop uh, networking, business liaison and bringing them together. I think that's the good thing that, um, and the reason why we get, get involved with the Eagles. One is, followed the Eagles ever since I was a kid at Don Valley Stadium. I even played um, on one of the, uh, I think it was the, you know, the um, halftime games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, you know, we've, we've been going down for years, but coming back to what you said, Mark, um, it's the sponsorship element of where, where we target ourselves as a Yorkshire-based business. Um, so we want to attract Yorkshire businesses and, and a platform that has a local element to it is, is great. Don't get me wrong, there, there is a, a vanity side attached to sports advertising, sports marketing. Um, but we need to create a return on the investment as well. And the bigger return on investment we can make, the better the vanity is the better the opportunity is for businesses to get involved. And just, just to close off this uh, this episode, you've touched on it. Um, 
How's the new stadium coming along? I've seen it on LinkedIn. You can see that there's structures going up for people that might not necessarily know about the new stadium. 